We are celebrating, uh, coming into this year, 10 years uh, as a combined chamber. About 10 years ago, um, two, two, two chambers from each side of the county came together and merged. And so this is the 10th year. And so this is what we call our diamond anniversary. So, uh, yeah, that's all right. I mean, one clap. <laughs> but we, we are excited. We're looking forward to having some, some great things uh, to, to be a part of some events and some uh, incredible initiatives that we are going to, to lay out uh, in terms of helping the county get better. We always talk about having it be a, a good place to live, to play, to work. Uh, but I really believe that we have uh, you all, the people in this room, and, and, and others uh, that are really bringing this county together in a special manner. So um, get ready. We, we, we have a, a host of new supervisors that are, that are a part of the county, and then uh, so many wonderful elected officials, but also just, just uh, being a part of the county, our business owners and whatnot, um, just we're, we're excited about the, what lies ahead. This is a new, not just a new year, a new decade, 2020. 2020 is a universal symbol of clear vision. How many have 2020 vision? <laughs> With glasses. <laughs> So we're, so we're looking to, to really lay out some vision and really go forward, and so we have some exciting things that are planned. And you're going to hear some of those today. We want to uh, take the time to appreciate all of our vision partners. Each has chosen an area of vision that makes up the Chamber's program of work because it's an area to which that member is committed. So please hold your applause. We're going to recognize our 2019-2020 vision partners. Uh, founding vision partner, Dominion Energy. Advocacy, Transurban. Business Growth, Freedom Bank. Education, Apple Federal Credit Union. We <laughs> <laughs> told you not to clap. So is that Bill? Is that Bill? Is that you, Bill? <laughs> We also have economic development uh, partner is our I-66 Express Mobility Partners. Help the community is Centerra, Northern Virginia Medical Center, and Aquatic Life Insiders Enterprise Incorporated. And also, uh, let's give them a hand. Now, at this time, also we want to recognize all of our Cornerstone partners. Um, we are excited about uh, this, these organizations. They have chosen uh, to partner with the Chamber in order, order to showcase their commitment to impacting the community and developing a reputation as your preferred partner in success. I ask again that you hold your applause uh, while we name uh, these partners. These are our cornerstone partners, C.C. Bartholomew Keller Williams Solutions. Also city, the city of Manassas, Dit Lake Incorporated, George Mason University Science and Technology Campus, Harvest Life Church. Iron Mountain Data Center, KO Distilling, Northern Virginia Community College, Manassas Woodbridge Campus, Novak, Northern Virginia Electric Cooperative, Novak uh, Health, UVA Health Systems, United Bank and Whitlock Wealth Management. Now, now if we have any Keystone partners, uh, could you stand? We have a list of so many. If you're a Keystone partner, we're going to just stand and be recognized. Let's give them give, give a We wish to thank also our gold sponsor, Omniride, which uh, is represented by Holly uh, Morello. And uh, she's going to come and have some remarks. Um, let's, let's, let's see Holly. <laughs> Hi, Holly. Thank you so much. I'm very much And, um, good evening. I'm Holly Morello, and I'm the TDA Program Manager at Omniride. And when Bob Schneider, the director at Omniride, told me earlier this week 
that he couldn't make this evening's event, he said, okay, this is your moment in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> what that means is I'm not going to be talking about buses tonight, but rather carpooling and van pooling. Um, as the TDM program manager on the ride, I promote alternative commute options. And that means carpooling and van pooling largely. And um, the programs that I manage are the ride sharing program as well as the employer outreach program. And the ride sharing program allows residents of Prince William County to go out to our website, fill out a match request form, and then what we'll do is send them back a detailed transit itinerary of all the transit options that work for them, um, including Metro, VRE, our buses, but we also provide them a detailed list of all the commuters that live near them, work near them, and have similar work hours so that they can hopefully get together with one another and start ride sharing. And then the Employer Outreach Program is a program where I work very closely with Prince William County employers to talk to them about those commute options so that they can be talking to their employees about carpooling and van pooling, um, alternate commute schedules, um, commute benefits, and things of that nature. So I'll take just a minute to say for those who have lived in the county, um, you know that the Hotlands are some of the first in the nation. Um, they were built in 73. They were HMB 4 back then. In, 18, in 1989, they turned it to HMB 3. And so the infrastructure on I-95 has been in place for a long time and is quite mature. Um, not as much on the 66 corridor. I'm going to spend just a little time talking about um, what that infrastructure looks like. So on the eastern side of the county, believe it or not, we have 6,814 commuter lot spaces. Um, compare that to the western side of the county where we have 2,073. Actually, that was as of um, November of last year, but in November of last year, we added 951 spaces to the university commuter lot. So now we're just over 3,000. Um, I forgot to say that on the west or the eastern side of the county, besides all the commuter lot spaces, we also have about 10,000 people a day sliding up and down the 95 corridor. So that's from Spotsylvania through Prince William County, Stafford as well. Um, then what's using that infrastructure? Um, we've got 88 active van pools on the eastern side of the county, and that translates, uh, actually it's 88 total van pools in the county, 77 on the eastern side of the county with a total of 482 riders. Um, and on the eastern or western side of the county, we have 11 van pools with 77 total riders. So there's a lot of room for growth on the east or the western side of the county, obviously, and we are excited about continuing to manage the demand for alternate options on the eastern side of the county, but are really, really excited about the growth on the western side of the county coming not only to the infrastructure, but also to the commute culture out there. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Holly. And thank you for all you all do uh, to help us get down the road and back. Um, I failed to introduce one of our VIPs. Uh, it's my wife. She is the queen. Wait a hand, This is a big special. Yeah, I go home tonight. <laughs> uh, we, we, are, we are really excited about um, what's, what's happening. And, and before I do this, let me uh, recognize our um, media partners inside NOVA and What's Up Prince William. They're going to be taking pictures and filming and taking, you know, taking notes, so to speak. Uh, and they, they gave me a note that said, if you would prefer not to be included in the video, please avoid that area. So, <laughs> but we, we all came today to hear some exciting things and concerning what our county uh, and what this region is, do <clears throat> is doing. And I'm excited to be a part of it, and, and you all certainly are a part of it. Um, it is now my pleasure to introduce, and, and they're going to come up. Um, we had some chairs that were up here, and one of the presenters, I won't mention Patrick's name, <laughs> he said he said, didn't want to sit up here, but um, Patrick Small is not, uh, um, I'm not going to mention his name, um, <laughs> but we, they're going to come and they're going to present, and then we're going to probably do some Q&A if we have some time, so that you can get a better understanding of, of what's going on. So at this particular time, uh, we have, um, on my notes, let's see, let's see here. let me make sure I follow, follow the presentation. All right, um, 
we're going to ask that uh, you get ready for the presentation for um, for the director of the city of Manassas. I think it's on my script that you are first, and then also we have Christina Wynn, uh, who is the executive director of economic development for Prince William County. So at this time, here comes Patrick. <laughs> Give it up. He's going to talk about uh, what they're doing in their area. So they literally had three chairs sitting here staring at all of them. So last year, um, I did the Colin McGregor Billion Dollar Walk uh, up to the podium, kicked a few people in the head, showed a bunch of slides of Micron, dropped the mic, and peaced out. Um, this, this year it's going to be a little more challenging for us, but all in all, we had a, a fantastic year. So um, it's a little squashed, but, but we'll get through this. Uh, All right, so we're going to start with a paid political advertisement. <laughs> because they pay me. I'm going to introduce you to our team, um, Nicole Smith and myself. There's only two of us in the Economic Development Department. Quite honestly, if you've never met us, um, and only know us by reputation, you might take the department staffed with honey badgers. But pound for pound, we're probably the most ferocious department on the planet. <laughs> but one, one of the things I'm most, most uh, proud of um, for, uh, for the department, but most importantly for her, is Nicole Smith achieving her certified economic development designation last year. Uh, our department has two certified professionals in it. To achieve that designation, uh, it's three to five years worth of study, uh, a comprehensive day-long three-part exam followed by an oral presentation in front of the Council of um, your peers and Nicole worked diligently and was awarded that designation. So what does she and I do? Uh, we're a full service EDO, economic development organization. We do business attraction, retention, marketing, uh, and we are also the city's tourism agency. 80% uh, of all new jobs in the community come from existing businesses. A uh, hundred percent of all existing jobs in the community can be attributed to existing businesses. So let that sink in for a second. Um, there are 1,555 employers in the city of Manassas paying an average weekly wage of north of $1,200 a week. Uh, that is an average annual salary in the city, average across the board, of over $60,000 a year. And the city currently has 2.1 percent unemployment, uh, which is below frictional. Our existing business visitation program uh, for retention uh, involves uh, Nicole and I working directly last year with 129 existing and prospective businesses. 23 of those existing businesses chose to invest additional capital or add employment. Um, 15 of them were prospective businesses that actually picked Manassas, and in addition to that, uh, Nicole does direct sales calls on existing businesses, both their visitation and relationship building calls and she visits personally with over a hundred businesses in the community a year so we stay pretty busy and I don't have a slide for it today but I want to do a shout out to uh, Mason and Small Business Development Center uh, that was a new initiative for the city last year we established the SBDC uh, to replace uh, the Florida Business Center which closed its operations and it's been a roaring success for us over the past year and I was very pleased when the county recognized that uh, and decided to follow suit. All right. So our major employers in the city, uh, Micron is pretty rapidly pulling away from Novell and Health, UVA Health Systems, uh, with over 1,500 employees, but Novell remains our second largest employer with 1,300. Um, most of these employers added jobs last year. Um, most of them are planning to add additional jobs in the upcoming year. And again, we spend most of our time working with folks like this. And most of you probably can't read this chart, and the ones of you that can probably don't care. Uh, <laughs> but in the yellow and gold area, in the lower right-hand section uh, down there, 
Um, that is the percentage of the employment base in the city of Manassas that is devoted to health care. Um, the sort of light whitish color on the far left is the percentage of the city's employment base that is in professional and technical services. So when we talk about our weekly wage, this 30% of our economy uh, is key to that. So the city of Manassas has the 10th highest weekly wage in the Commonwealth of Virginia, the 16th highest per capita income, the fourth highest overall wage for professional and technical services, and we remain a net importer of labor into the community. Uh, 18,000, almost 18,500 people drive into the city of Manassas every day uh, for work. There are not a lot of communities in this country uh, that can claim that, so uh, we're truly blessed. Uh, I had to put that in there. Um, <laughs> that's a slide I showed like eight times last year. Uh, but clearly, uh, it's a big deal. And it remains to this day the single largest capital investment ever made uh, by a company in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, and yes, I'm going to ride that horse. <laughs> So, so there's an aerial uh, of the construction of Micron. The two buildings in the foreground in the lower right, uh, that is what's under construction now, and I would point out that is half of what Micron is committed to build. That is phase one uh, of phase two, which is the manufacturing fab labs, uh, and does not also include the uh, Center for uh, Automotive Excellence that they will be building in the city of Manassas as well. And there's another view. That, that one highlights the official bird of the city of Manassas. Not a crane. <laughs> and Micron's already paying dividends for us this year. Applied Materials opened up in the city of Manassas. They're a publicly traded company, uh, a world leader in the production, service, and sale of the kind of equipment that Micron uses in their facility. Uh, they brought 20 jobs to us, and they'll be adding another 10 uh, in the near term. And this is one the governor helped us out with uh, last year. Another supplier, uh, Micron, the governor threw a few training dollars at the deal. It's over 100 uh, jobs uh, with an average annual wage of $105,000 a year. And these are the types of jobs we talk about when we talk about career and technical education. These are not the engineers uh, that work at high purity systems. I would also add high purity systems is a union shop. Um, they use union labor out of Washington, D.C. and just as a, a sort of temporary sales pitch. Uh, Commonwealth of Virginia does allow unions uh, they're not forbidden in the state. However, right to work remains one of our single biggest attractions for new employers. So in Virginia, we believe it's the employer's options to whether they want to unionize or not. And I hope all of you would join the chamber uh, in opposing uh, any efforts to change that in Richmond uh, this year or at any time in the future. And you can talk to Boss or Nicole, who chairs the Chamber's Policy Committee about that. We do have an airport. Um, that is the busiest general aviation airport in the entire Commonwealth of Virginia. 30% of all the state's general aviation activity occurs there. Uh, it houses for us companies like Aurora Flight Science and Lidos. Uh, Lidos has added about 50 jobs since they came to us and they're growing rapidly. Hopefully trying to break into that top 10 list at some point. This airport operates in black. That is rare for a municipal airport. City owned, uh, so it actually contributes uh, both lease rentals and property tax revenues to the city over and above paying the expenses it takes to operate the airport. Um, and in addition to the dividends it pays last year, uh, we did the groundbreaking on Chantilly Air's new fixed based operation. There it is under construction. For those of you who've ever been on a long trip and, and stopped it, um, I want you to think about the most awesomest truck stop you've ever pulled into. Um, with the nice showers and the great food. A fixed base operator is essentially a truck stop for airplanes. Uh, they get their gas there, they have pilots lounges. Um, only when you think about it nice, these are people that own jets worth tens of millions of dollars. So it's really, really nice. <laughs> Maybe truck stop isn't the best thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Lady Academy Branch, the city's largest. Oh, well, you're screwed, Chris. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used up all the batteries. Um, 40 acres, $150 million mixed use development uh, under construction now. It's a public private partnership. We update you on that project as it goes along. Um, 
The True by Hilton uh, is under construction now, should be open in June. And Buchanan uh, Partners is under construction on that office retail building on the left. That should be open in April, and it is available for lease now. Uh, so you'll see near the pole or plus guest pole. There we go. Just be on. <laughs> so Stanley Martin's building luxury townhomes out there, uh, almost 300 of them. They average about $450,000. After the first 114 were built this school year, um, we keep track of the number of school kids that are coming out of the new developments by bus stop. Four kids uh, from this development. So if you hear people saying that residential development uh, is going to sink public schools, it's not necessarily true because the kind of developments we're building in the city of Manassas, like the Messenger, uh, Journal Messenger building, Messenger Place in downtown, uh, the Live Work units in Hastings Marketplace, these developments are primarily young professionals uh, that don't have children who are moving into our, into our community uh, for some of those fantastic jobs. We do have a problem in the city of Manassas, though. Um, we have very little to sell, which is why existing businesses are so important for us. So for those of you, those of you who get our market reports, get our e-newsletters, uh, you probably got one on downtown today. The number for downtown or even even worse, uh, we have a sub 4% vacancy in our office market. We have sub 4% vacancy in our retail market. And we have sub 2.5% vacancy in our industrial and flex market. Um, so new construction is important to us. We don't have a lot of places um, to do that, uh, which is why we attract developments like the Landy Academy Branch. Uh, because we're uh, really become a premium commodity uh, for companies. On the marketing side, we continue to invest in extending our brand. Hopefully you're all familiar with it. Uh, we'll put it on everything. It's in the upper right corner. It's in the bottom. It's on every single slide. It's on every single thing we do. Uh, it's been very well received. And if you are not familiar with what's going on in the city of Minnesota, it's probably because you're not paying attention. Um, Nicole runs our social media programs. Uh, we are one of the most followed localities in Northern Virginia. Uh, our e-newsletter goes out every two weeks. Uh, we have a robust Facebook, Twitter presence, and Instagram as well. Last year, uh, because workforce development and employment is an issue for us, uh, we launched a new website called Move to Manassas. This website aggregates information on, it doesn't, it's not like the city's webpage where you find out about the comp plan, the parks and rec plan, and who's on the city council. This is where prospective residents go to find information on neighborhoods, churches, schools, whether they be public or private, uh, or even homeschooling, things to do in the region. So if your HR department is not using this with prospective employees, you really should be. And if you're a realtor and you're not linked to this site, uh, shame on you. <laughs> yeah, that was shameless. Um, festivals and events in the city of Manassas. Uh, tourism is the other thing that uh, we do in conjunction with historic Manassas Inc. We consider it the first date for economic development. If you come to our downtown and participate in our events, uh, you're going to fall in love with our city and you're going to want to have your business here and you're going to want to move here. Uh, we did over 450,000 visitors in the city of Manassas last year. Uh, our goal is to break 500,000 this year. Um, $4.4 million in meals tax revenues, up 14% since 2014. Um, $9 million in sales tax, up 12% since 2014. Um, I actually started to do all the math on that and added it up. It was hard because I'm not a math guy. But I started in 2014, so I'll let you do the math on that. <laughs> All right, so what's my legacy for the city of Manassas? <laughs> well, what can I leave behind when I retire, or move on, or get hit by a truck? Um, or somebody shoots me. <laughs> so that is not my legacy. That is my legacy. How many of you have come to downtown and participated in one of our special events where you can get a drink, walk out of the restaurant, and walk up and down the streets, walk into the retailers, uh, and really enjoy yourselves? That is probably the single greatest. Well, thank you, Krispy Kreme. 
Um, I'm probably the single greatest things I've done in the city. So, um, and I didn't give a shout out to Juan Rivera. He's our airport director. He runs it. He does a fantastic job for us as well. So, um, with that, I'll turn this broken mic over to Christina. <laughs>
<laughs> Those are the types of things that when we're talking about collaborations and partnerships, how are we taking that to the next level? And that's when we're looking at our strategic plan, our the economic development work plan, who are our partners, where can we actually leverage resources? Connectivity. Obviously, connectivity has always been important, and this is both transportation and fiber. And what's happening is, you know, think about this. The DMV region is the second largest, um, um, sorry, I lost my words, second largest um, workforce that for STEM occupations, so computer sciences, engineers, AI, um, data analytics, data scientists, et cetera, second largest in the nation for having those STEM occupations. So what does that mean? That means that those workers are working in companies in the DMV, and the majority of those are actually in Northern Virginia, developing the newest technologies and the new advancements in not only transportation, but defense, IT, and related things. Those, um, and then you add the fact that Northern Virginia has the largest, um, or the highest concentration of federal research agencies. So think about, NSF, National Science Foundation, DARPA, Office of Naval Research, and et cetera. All of those organizations are funding innovation. So where Silicon Valley is funded by venture capitalists, the entrepreneurs and the innovation that happens in this area is funded by these federal research agencies. And so we are really working, and our employers are cutting edge working on these new technologies. And so how does 5G get rolled out? How does that all happen? IoT, Internet of Things. You know, somebody just told me the other day that how these technologies are actually transforming and being into our lives on a daily basis, that the, the ring doorbell, that they just reported that that is where it was, um, you know, uh, meant to be, you know, uh, protection advice is actually now catching criminals. I mean, think about how this technology is changing the way we live, we live and experience our daily lives and how we're doing businesses. And so when you think about transportation, you know, our chair, Chair Wheeler, at the opening um, statement of her first board meeting talked about how we need to bring, you know, the VRE out to Gainesville and bring Metro to Woodbridge. And you know why that's important? Is that we have to be connected within this region. You know, the perception is, is that Prince William is so far out there, it's, oh, it's out there. But if we start now connecting within the region using transportation and technology, we are gonna be considered and being able to attract more jobs and more employment to our area. The other piece, Hey, thank you. <laughs> um, the other piece is microtransit. You know, when you think about being able to attract workforce, a lot of the, the, the DMV region was really a leader in thinking about capital bike share, scooters, and so forth. You know, and that technology associated with the electric bikes and whatever they're doing, I don't know, I'm not a technologist, but whatever they're doing to really advance that, to make that mobility easier, to connect nodes, well, how are we now um, embracing that and bringing that and thinking about that in our future developments and planning for that? And the last piece would be smart cities. You know, the whole D DMV area ha is very um, progressive in terms of having smart city policies. Thinking about where Wi-Fi is, where, how we are connecting the public um, life health um, safety systems. Those are pieces that we need to think about. And when we start becoming and acting as a technology player, we are going to be able to um, attract more tech employers and, and really stop becoming a, a bedroom community. Workforce development and training. Patrick um, talked about this. So the workforce, you know, when people say, when you talk about workforce, Everybody kind of has a different kind of um, idea in, in their mind. For a long time, most of the programs around workforce has been in education and, and training. 
And so the public schools are doing you know, an amazing job with career technical education. Our universities and, and um, the skills source, we have all of these amazing resources that are working on training more workers, developing them, um, creating sponsor, uh, internships and entrepreneurship or apprenticeship programs. And so how are, um, and using that to really develop our workforce, this really, this issue became even more um, hyper-focused when Amazon and Micron really decided to invest in this area. Every, a lot of employers were very worried about Amazon creating 25,000 jobs. You know, I just said we were the second largest in these STEM-related, second largest market for these STEM-related occupations, but now Amazon's gonna come and take all the jobs, right? That's what everybody's thinking. So there is a lot of emphasis and a lot of focus at the state level, the local level, all of our university partnerships, um, and so forth to really think about how are we developing the workforce of tomorrow? How are we cranking out more uh, university um, students and graduates in these STEM-related programs? The Virginia Economic Development Partnership is making a lot of strides in creating um, a tech talent pipeline with their investment in the university system. They anticipate that through this investment that they're making over a 20 year period, they're going to increase the number of computer science um, graduates by 25,000 people, um, which is almost double what they are, are doing right now. And so that is super important as we're thinking about how are, if, if we are perceived as having a future labor force, uh, shortage or that it's hard to get workers, it's going to be hard for us to attract jobs. And so there's a lot of efforts in, in going into this. The other piece is talent recruitment. Most, if you listen to the Fuller Institute and the reports that they put out, our, the DMV area has always lost a lot of um, graduates that grew up here. A lot of Prince William students that went to high school here, go to college, and they never came back home because they didn't think they had a job. And the only reason why our region grows is because we have this international um, in-migration of, of people coming in. And so the NOAA Economic Development Alliance, how many people know about what that is? No? OK. All right. Good job, Sophia. <laughs> so, when I talked about collaboration and partnerships, one of the most amazing things that happened just this fall was that the 10 jurisdictions in Northern Virginia got together, the economic development directors, and said, we are going to create an alliance so that we can market together and um, work together to uh, amplify the Northern Virginia message. And because, because of the Amazon win, they were, Northern Virginia actually got recognized separately from the DMV. Always in the past, any time that people would talk about Northern Virginia, they always lump it in with DC. They would say Metro DC area. And so when that short list came out with Amazon, it didn't say Metropolitan DC. It said District of Columbia, and it, then it said Northern Virginia. And so what we got together as, um, in, uh, as partners to say, we're going to work together. One of the things that we're going to focus on is talent recruitment, is how are we helping really bring the, the, the workforce in, the talented workforce in, to supply our, work, uh, our employers and to make sure that pipeline doesn't dry up. And Fairfax County is one of the leaders in that area. They have a large budget, and they are already investing in trying to um, develop programs and opportunities to start to market our area. You know, I gotta um, hand it off to Patrick and Nicole. You know, their um, move to Manassas website, I did stumble on that very early on. It's a fantastic website. Because think about it, if I'm looking for a job and I'm from this area, I want to know 
you know, what is there to do? How are the schools? What is, what is the opportunities here? And so having those resources available on marketing to be able to attract that workforce is really important. The workforce incentives piece is also, there's always been some kind of grant training, job training program, but again, the Virginia Economic Development Partnership recognizes that workforce is such an issue that they are, um, they've taken a big step this year. They are, they plan to create a workforce program and have over 50 employees working in workforce related um, programming. And, and they have created a new, uh, it's called a TAP program, the Talent Accelerator Program. And what this is, is instead of an employer that's coming into the area, they either can opt to have a grant and then go do workforce recruitment on their own, or they actually get this customized service from the state, from the Virginia Economic Development Partnership, to work with um, the, the staff to develop, recruit, and attract their workforce for their jobs. And so it is modeled after some of the best workforce programs in the nation, and our state, Virginia, will have that. That means that when we're attracting employers to the city of Manassas and um, Prince William County, we're going to have access to be able to market that, and that's gonna be extremely instrumental. Placemaking. So placemaking, obviously, we have, it is, um, it's been, you know, it has been uh, continuing to evolve, I would say, as the, um, I think, the regular kind of uh, residents. You know, placemaking has always been kind of like urban centers and city centers. You know, think about, like, uh, those experiences. And rest in, Town Center was one of the very first communities that started to try to create this sense of place. And it's taken over 20 years for Reston to be what it is today. But what's, what we're thinking about now is how are we creating those nodes of activities, those pop-up experiences? People don't shop at stores the way they used to because we can buy what, like 90% of what we need on a daily basis online. So when we're going out, we want to have experiences. We want to connect. We want to engage with people. And so our city centers or our nodes of activity have to be able to give people this, this opportunity to experience things and to bring together the sociability. And so we need to think about like what Prince William is doing with our small area plans and developing these nodes of activity, this is going to play a big part because if we're going to be able to attract the workforce and we're going to be able to attract the, 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 um, the talent, people want to know where are they eating and shopping at lunchtime or after work and they're going to go get a drink and they don't want to have to go miles and miles away and they don't want to get in their car, they want it accessible. So having amenities available is going to be super important. Pop-up retail, being a, or pop-up libraries, pop-up art spaces, those are great tools to help us activate maybe spaces that are vacant or have been underutilized for a period of time and try, try to bring new uh, life into a neighborhood or, or a node. And so when we think about Another trend and things that we need to be um, really implementing and doing our, our strategies, placemaking is huge because people, um, because places matter to people and economies. It's not about um, it's not about where uh, the lowest prices or the lowest land is. It's about the place. Which brings me to the revitalization of the, the I-95 Route 1 corridor. We are focused when I think about how these uh, placemaking um, principles are actually going to affect how we start to strategize and encourage investment. This plays a big part. Just um, right before the end of the year, the North um, Woodbridge area, small area plan was adopted and approved. 
that small area plan actually calls for mixed-use vertical development in a walkable community that's going to have that sense of place. Do you know, ever since now that plan has been approved, we have gotten so many um, interested property owners and investors that are now looking to this area. And these are real, so that it's too early for me to talk about, but it's, but it's, it happens. And the county has made so much investment in terms of infrastructure and um, widening Route 1 and varying utilities to help create that sense of place. The, um, the market, and so, you know, like I, I get a lot of people saying like, well, we never really focused on the eastern side of the county before. And, you know, why are we doing this now? Or you should have been doing this before. Well, let me tell you, you know, five years ago, I don't even think that we could have put, um, gotten the level of interest in this area like we are now. And that reason is, is that you have these higher priced markets in uh, Reston, Tyson's, DC, Arlington, Alexandria. And so now those government contractors, those IT companies, those maybe second tier uh, in 5,000 companies that may have gone to those places, you know, initially, they're being outpriced and they can't afford to actually be there. So if they don't need to have direct access to the Capitol or DC or the Pentagon, this is a great opportunity. And so I feel like when we're thinking about the future of 2020 and beyond, I-95 Route 1 corridor is where it's at. <laughs> Existing business engagement. So I've been a big um, proponent for um, my economic development career. When I think about uh, existing businesses, I think about what types of value-added services that we can offer to help um, companies generate more revenue and um, create new, new partnerships that hopefully create uh, new lines of business. And with the bottom line that I want you to expand and grow in my county. And so we, we develop our programs and services around this in mind. How can we lift up our companies and give them more opportunities? The interesting thing is about existing business engagement is because the workforce today and the one tomorrow is so socially conscious. When they are looking for jobs, they go to an employer's website and they want to see what is that employer doing in the community? Do they have volunteer programs? Are they giving back? Because they want, or do they recycle? Like, right? What kind of policies do they have? And they want to be a part of companies that embrace those same values that they, they do. And so when we think about where we're going in the future, part of our engagement is going to be around getting the uh, existing business community involved in the community. How are we helping give opportunities to, that, to their workforce to get involved and give back. And we believe that that is gonna create more opportunities, more partnerships, and, um, and really help them continue. It'll, like, it'll dig them in, in their roots where they're so connected into our community they'll never wanna leave. Um, and it'll create more opportunities for them uh, to connect and, and generate more revenue. The last piece is Entrepreneurship. If you've heard me speak before, I've told you that's um, <laughs> I've told you that um, one of the interesting coattails from Amazon locating to Northern Virginia is that they have a stat that says um, three out of every ten employees that worked for Amazon goes off and starts their own business. And so when you think about what small business and entrepreneurship is, and, and we have Micron and these other um, major employers in the area, and you have technology, we need to be ready to really build capacity 
with um, our small businesses and help them not only start and launch a business, but then scale and continue to grow. And whatever their exit strategy is, whether it's they want to leave, they want to continue to grow and leave a legacy for their kids, or they want to exponentially grow and get bought out, we need to support and be able to have the tools ready so that we can grow our own. And because I think there's going to be a lot more opportunities that is um, going to be presented for more entrepreneurship and more companies to, to grow. With small business and entrepreneurship, it takes a village and it takes many different partners. And you know, I'm going to echo uh, George Mason, give a, or echo Patrick, and give a shout out to our friends at, at George Mason. And as Patrick says, we did follow suit. We just we like to copy him. Um, and, and we did, and we did um, uh, uh, reach out, and we still we have a, a Mason Small Business Development Center, and we're looking at you know when you think about the themes, it all connects back because we're looking at how do we partner with veteran programs, how do we how do we partner with AARP to engage retired professionals to start new businesses? How are we engaging with the Latin um, Latino uh, Economic Development um, Chamber and uh, Corporation to make sure that we have Spanish-speaking counselors to really help our, our minority and women-owned um, businesses. You, so how are we creating those partnerships? And it all circles back. So all those things are all integrated in order for us to do economic development. And then last, I'm just going to leave you with our snapshot. I did not do any, like, here's what our accomplishments are. But when I think about the future of 2020, you know, our demographics are continuing to change. You know, I'm hoping that with um, our ability to, um, to attract uh, more workforce, that talented workforce, and create more jobs here in Prince William, that our demographics will even get better and um, uh, more attractive to, to uh, attract more companies. Thank you.